it's Heidi with Broadmeadow Farm. And if you happen to follow me on Instagram, then you'll have seen this photo here. And then you'll know what this week's video is all about. Way back in September, maybe it was October, when they started digging the basement for our house, I actually asked our excavating crew if they would create a big greenhouse pad for me. I knew that the plan was sometime in this spring summer we would be able to start building the greenhouse and one thing that's super important when you build a greenhouse is you want to make sure you have a strong sturdy level pad and so that's what this is here all behind me. You see here behind me though the greenhouse is smaller than this pad that I'm standing on and that is because I actually have another greenhouse that I purchased from family just up the road and we may put that up this summer, I'm not sure, but that's definitely there for expansion for the future. But over the past week, mostly Friday and Saturday, we were actually able to get the greenhouse to this level. So let's just take a look a little closer and I'll explain what we did. Before we get into the actual greenhouse structure and what we worked on, I want to talk a little bit about water. Behind me here you can see we have a hydrant and it was really important for me to get water brought right up into the greenhouse. The hydrant is connected to our pressure system in the house but it is underground and we don't have to worry about it freezing or anything but we do have the ability to turn it off at the house which is kind of a nice option should ever something arise and we need to turn it off. The biggest reason I wanted the irrigation right here into the greenhouse is when you're growing in Alberta, it's typically minus 20, it can dip below 30 below. And so there's no way that you could run water from a house via a garden hose, it just would freeze. And when you're looking at a greenhouse this big here, you know you're not hauling water bucket at a time to water all your crops. So that was one of the biggest things that I had them do aside from the actual leveling of the pad is I made sure they brought the water in as well. The other thing we brought in here is this electrical line. Don't worry it's not connected it's just in the ground it hasn't been connected to the panel yet but that electricity is going to run things like the exhaust fan, the shutters, the furnace, any lights we bring in, any electrical outlets that we might put in. It's just an all around service. And so that was another thing that I made sure that when we had our excavation crews here on site, that we did that groundwork for this setup because it's more affordable when you have the crews on site rather than having them to come back later and then rip everything up again. Since I knew this weekend we would be working on the greenhouse, Friday during the day I was able to get the four corner posts marked out with stakes and then when I came home from work Arlen had started to lay out all of the anchor posts. And the anchor posts are what the greenhouse is actually secured to the ground with. So this here that I, thing I'm holding, this aluminum pipe, is a three foot anchor post and you can see here it's got holes here and these holes are actually what the greenhouse ribs are secured on with. This here is the big greenhouse hoop and we've got a bolt that we're put in and then a nut on here. And once the greenhouse was all put up then we'll come back later and tighten all these bolts just to make sure everything is secure. So each of these anchor posts had to be measured and leveled and then pounded into the ground. So between Arlen and our oldest son Jordan they were able to get all of them pounded in. There's a sleeve that goes over this and they used a sledgehammer to get them pounded into the ground. So we purchased this greenhouse about three, four, maybe even five years ago when we used to live north of here. And we operated the greenhouse for one or maybe two years before we realized that we were going to be listing the house for sale. So when it came time to move, I knew that we needed to dismantle the greenhouse. So one thing I needed to figure out was a way that we could put this giant puzzle back together a year down the road without too much confusion. So one thing I actually did is I numbered all of the parts. So here's an example. This wall is the shutter wall. So all the pieces were labeled shutter and then I labeled here a four, and then I had these two labeled four as well, so I knew that these two connected to this one. 
Down here we've got a five and a five. Over here you can see again shutter and a three and a three. So when we came time to actually building this structure on the weekend, the kids and I were able to separate all of the parts on two sides of the greenhouse pad. We've got all of the pieces that were on this side labeled shutter and all of the pieces on that side labeled fan, which really kind of sped the process up. Otherwise, it was just a pile of metal pipes and a bunch of confusion. So on this side here is our shutter end. It's opening here. We're going to have a four foot louvered shutter. And when the greenhouse gets too warm, the thermostat will actually kick open those louvers. And then on the other end, we have a giant exhaust fan, which will suck out all of the heat and we'll be able to keep the greenhouse at a more manageable temperature. So there you have it. That's what we were able to get accomplished over the last week. And if you wanna follow along a little bit more on this greenhouse building journey, click that like button down below and uh, maybe even hit that subscribe. So stay tuned in the following weeks for updates on the greenhouse. Thanks for coming and checking in and we'll see you next time. Bye.